Hello lovely humans, Jen Foxbot here. In today's episode of Math Mondays, we are continuing our exploration of polarization. Yay! So we have looked at what happens to a neutral atom when you apply an electric field. And now it's time for us to explore what happens to molecules that already have some charge separation or a polar molecule because it's polarized, not because it lives in the Arctic. We'll use water as an example. Water is a super cool polarized molecule, which is also why it makes a great solvent because its charges are separated. Yay. And it wants to steal charges from other things. <gasps> oh no, sometimes good. Um, so we'll look at what happens to a water molecule when we place it in an external field. Yay. We'll do two examples, a uniform electric field and a non-uniform electric field. Okay, let's get started. So we have our neutral atom here and let's say we apply an external electric field, which is going to be purple this time. The positively charged nucleus will feel a force in the direction of the electric field, like Hya, and the negatively charged electron cloud will feel a force in the opposite direction, like that, a little bit harder to draw. Drag a cloud over, what does it mean? What does it look like when you grab a cloud? No, no, no. But the whole cloud will feel a force that way, and what happens is you end up with a separation of the positive and negative charges, also called a dipole moment. So now this is an induced dipole moment. It was caused or induced by the electric field that we applied. Whoops, almost lost my job. Okay, but what happens if we already have a molecule that's got a dipole moment? Hmm, interesting. Okay, so I need to figure out where to draw this. Okay, we're gonna draw it over here. Yeah, we're gonna draw it over here. Okay, so we have one Mickey Mouse here, we have a Mickey Mouse head. Okay, um, so in a water molecule, uh, I hope I just didn't make anybody upset. It really does look like a little mouse ears. Um, so in a water molecule, you have the large oxygen where um, the negative charges, the electrons like to cluster. And then you have um, your hydrogen atoms, which is where you end up with a lack of electrons or a surplus oopsies, of positive charge. Um, and this angle, I know I didn't draw it correctly, but this angle it is 105 degrees. Um, and so this is already polarized. The positive charges are up here and the negative charges are down here. So what happens if we take our purple electric field and we apply, um, we apply it to this molecule? Well, let's draw a simpler representation so that we can do a little bit of analysis. So I'm going to take um, this lever arm right here. Um, so we have our vertex of one of the hydrogen atoms, which is going to have a charge of positive Q. And we have the vertex of the oxygen atom, which is going to have a, a charge of negative Q. I need to set up kind of a coordinate system. So we'll be like, okay, this is the center point. We'll call that script O. And this line is going to have a length V. Um, so we're going to just go like this, there's a little curly bracket. This is a D. And D is a vector which points from the oxygen vertex to the hydrogen vertex. Okay, so now I'm going to get another color. And so our electric field is going to apply a force in this direction to the positive charge. Whoopsies, not on E, we want an F. Okay, so we're going to call that F positive. And this one is going to feel a force in the opposite direction because it's a negative charge. And so we're going to call that F negative. But these two are actually equal and opposite because they have the same charges. So F, uh, the force on the positive charge is QE. And the force on, oh, okay, I'm going to save space. The force on the negative charge is negative QE. Okay, so equal and opposite. So there's no net effect from the electric field perspective. However, if we consider this to be a physical bar and these are mechanical forces, 
Sure, the bar isn't going to bend, but assuming it's fixed here, the bar is going to start rotating. Hey, wait a second, that's called torque. Yes. So the, <laughs> the molecule along this axis will feel a net torque on it. Okay, so how do we calculate that? Well, the equation for torque, I'm going to use the symbol N for torque, equals the um, torque lever arm, which is R, whoopsies, <laughs> that's a tiny X, cross the force on the bar. Um, so for example, uh, if you have a force here, this is your lever arm, it's fixed here, um, this is going to be R. So in this case, our lever arm is um, this axis that I have labeled as a distance D. Sorry about that, my microphone got a little messed up. Okay, so um, we have two contributions that are pushing the bar in the same rotational direction. So when I think about um, like <laughs> the curly Q thing that we can do with our hands, um, uh, this force will cause the bar to rotate this way. This force will cause the bar to rotate this way, which is the same uh, clockwise direction. So they add together. Um, so that gives us the lever arm from the positive cross lever arm um, force uh, plus our negative, that's a vector, cross the force on the negative. And uh, I'm going to give myself a little more space here. So uh, the, the positive um, lever arm is going to be d over 2. This is a vector uh, because it is fixed at this center point here. They're stuck together. Um, and so then it's going to be cross uh, this positive force, cross QE plus negative d over 2 because it's in the opposite direction that we decided our um, lever arm was pointing. And again, it's a vector. Um, cross negative QE. Okay, these uh, negative signs are going to cancel and let me just double check my notes so I get this right. Um, we can pull the Q's out and we can simplify the halves are going to equal one one half plus one half is one so we're going to end up with um d whoops wait hold on we want to keep the cross product because we don't know what e is so we can't really solve for the cross product but we can do some math tricks q is a constant so we can pull it out d is a vector so we got to keep that but the one halves equal one so we end up with QD cross E. Hey, wait a second. This looks super familiar. Yeah, it's an equation for a dipole moment between two charges. So, boom, we can simplify this a little bit. Where did my piece of junk go? My ideal. Oh, I put it over there. Okay, so um, we end up with the net torque equals um, the um, dipole moment of the molecule cross the external electric field. Boom! QED. Whatever. We are a math boss. Okay, so <laughs> what does this mean? Uh, how do we read this equation? So basically what this tells us is that the net torque on the polarized molecule is going to cause the molecule to rotate and it's going to want to line up um, the dipole, uh, which is the separation between the negative and positive vertices in the molecule, it's going to want to line that up with the electric field. Pretty cool, right? Um, you also can do the same analysis for this other axis, um, which would be a great challenge for you. Yeah. Okay, so that is a uniform electric field. Let's tackle a non-uniform electric field. Okay, so let's leave that there because that's going to be the same. Um, and let's say that our electric field is changing. 
And so in this case, um, wait, yeah, so in this case, that's actually not true. Um, there's going to be a net force, a net electric force on the molecule. Okay, so we have our positive Q here or negative Q here. There is also going to be um, a torque, but we don't really need to worry about that because we already did the, we already calculated the torque. Um, so this is going to be F positive, oops, F negative, F positive. Okay, but this time they're not necessarily equal and opposite because the electric field is changing. The electric field's not constant. Um, and so what we can do, though, is we can say, okay, the net force, the total force, is going to equal the contributions um, of the force on the positive charges plus the contributions of the force on the negative charges. Um, and uh, we know that the charges are the same, they just have opposite sign. Actually, this is still true. That's very silly of me. I was thinking too quickly. Um, so F negative equals negative QE. That's a Q, not a 4. Okay, so we can pull Q out because it's a constant and it's the same. And we end up with E positive. I guess I should state that's what's going to be different here. Um, e positive minus, uh, yeah, E on the electric field on the negative charges. And so we can simplify this and say Q delta E, where this is the difference in the electric field between the positive vertex and the negative vertex. Um, and so what we can do, because the dipole is very, very small, molecules are super tiny, we can use some math tricks and just define this uh, quantity the, ch the difference between the electric field at the positive and negative ends of the molecule, we can define that to be, so that's what this triple equal sign, we are setting this equal to, um, well, let's look at one component, um, uh, del, uh, the gradient of the electric field in the x direction, um, dot, the lever arm. And again, this is just a math trick. Um, and so when we generalize that, uh, we would say that the change in E, uh, this is like literally the uh, coming from the definition of calculus, um, is um, the distance dot del times E. Um, and so then we can simplify this force. Um, oopsies. Wait, okay, yeah, so when we plug it back in, so we're gonna replace this quantity with this equation. We have a factor of Q here. We have Q, um, uh, yeah, we can move it inside. Q D dot del times E. Hey, our dipole moment showed up again. Um, and so the final equation that we get is um, the dipole moment dot our gradient, which is a vector, hold on. Yeah, is a vector. Doo -doo -doo, that's why it's got a dot product. Okay, um, times E. Whoops, we don't need that. Okay, so this is the net force due to a changing electric field. Why can we not, um, pull this out. Uh, why do, why does the dipole moment, why can't we pull that out of this dot product with the gradient? Basically it's because um, the gradient will help us suss out the things that are changing in position. And so if you have a dipole moment that is not constant in space, um, meaning it's a function of position, it changes depending on where you are. Um, then uh, this, this can't be pulled out because it, depending on, again, depending on where you are or, or what part of the molecule you are looking at, this equation will be different. If the dipole moment does not depend on position, then yes, you can pull it out. Cool. 
it's always better to start from general, apply your uh, particular um, scenario, the particular conditions that you're looking at, and then simplify the equation and solve the problem from there. But it's always good to start from the most general application. Okay, so that's it. This is what happens to a polarized molecule when you apply an electric field. A uniform electric field will cause the molecule to rotate, and a non-uniform electric field will cause, uh, there will actually be a net force on the molecule which could distort its shape. Um, for example, you could cause one of the hydrogen atoms to separate, or you could kind of um, elongate it. Um, you could actually cause the oxygen molecule to be shaped differently. Um, and it will likely rotate as well. Pretty cool. Electric fields are very powerful. Keep in mind that this is all happening on very, very small scales, um, but I think it's really fascinating that we can kind of probe molecules and atoms with electric fields. Ooh, it's so fun. Okay, I hope that this was helpful. Please let me know if you have any questions about polar molecules. We will continue our exploration of um, electrodynamics, and then we'll, uh, yeah, we'll move on to something else. But we're getting close to the end here, so... Definitely let me know if there's a topic in electrodynamics that you really, really want me to cover because I only have maybe like three or four episodes left, estimating. Okay, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye, friends!